Well, Dolly, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Well, um, thank you. How are you feeling about uh, 9 to 5 Musical hitting the London stage? Well, I'm feeling excited more than anything. I cannot wait to see all the new cast up there doing all the songs that I've written for the plays. Like, here, my, my songs are kind of like my kids, so it's kind of <laughs> like seeing my kids in recital, but with this wonderful cast. So I'm hoping that we all have a good time. The cast seem to be having a good time, and they're loving it. And, I'm just dying to see it all come together. And it's almost 40 years since the film came out. I, I mean, know. Are you surprised that it still resonates with so many people? It's just like it won't die. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Because 9 to 5, as you know, we did that in 79. It came out in 80. And uh, that was part of my deal was that I would write the theme song. And you hope for the best. You hope you get a good song. When, when you did write that song back in the 70s, 40 years on, are women where you thought they would be 40 years on? Or do you think there's still a long way to go? Well, I think there's going to always be a long way to go. It's just a work in progress as life itself is, but especially women in, in the workplace. So I really think that's why we're here now with this new, with the, with the new Me Too movement. It kind of brought up the subject again with the harassment in the workplace and the fact that women are still not getting a chance to do as much as, as they can or paid, you know, equal for the work that they do. And so there's still all those issues. I really think that when that came out in the 80s, it really did do a lot of good. It really did shine the light on that. You, you mentioned Me Too. I mean, you managed to navigate a career really successfully. You made a lot of really savvy business decisions at a time when it can't have been that easy being a woman in that industry. Did you have issues coming through the industry? Well, you know, I didn't really think about it like that at the time because I had grown up with, with men. My, I have six brothers and my dad and my uncles. I was always close to, you know, all the men in my family. I've known a lot of great men. So I never was, you know, I didn't think about it that much. Of course, I've been hit on all my life. You know, any young girl would be. But a lot of that I just took as a compliment. But I never, you know, I never did anything to try to get ahead in the business. You know, I never slept with anybody unless I wanted to. And I'd never put myself in a position where I tried to stay out of those positions. And if I found myself in that, I was lucky that I had a great personality and a great sense of humor that I could joke my way out of a lot of it. And then if I couldn't, I have enough temper and backbone that I would kind of get out of it some other way. But I did work. It was a man's world back then, and I, I enjoyed it. When we saw you up on the stage just last weekend at the Grammys, with all of this fantastic young talent around you all singing up there with you, do you think the life for those young women starting off in the industry, already enormously successful, those women you were singing with, is it better for them now, do you think? I think it is, and I think we've made a lot of good, a good progress and a lot of good points. And I do think, though, that I think that people are more open than... I'm hoping that, you know, that we can get out there and do what we think we couldn't do. I mean, we can be a little more aggressive, and now that we've got a, you know, an op more of an open path now, and I think we can just go for it and just keep doing what we do, and I think that's what we always have to do. I'm proud to be a woman, and I, you know, it's like I look like a woman, but I think like a man, because I do know how men think, <laughs> because I just, you know, meaning that I, you know, I don't think of it in terms of male or female. I just think of it in terms of getting a job done. And in terms of your image, you've always had a very feminine image, very sexy, but also very joyous, very glam, very fun. Um, you talk about your girls, uh, but we've never seen your girls out. When you, do you, you, want to, you don't want to see them <laughs> out, do you? <laughs> Fully. When you look at the young girls today, and I know obviously Miley Cyrus is your goddaughter, um, but when you see people like Miley in their pants in videos, do you think, oh, girl, put it away, or do you think, go girl, you wear what you want to? Well, I don't try to tell other people what to do. People are always saying, what kind of advice would you give? I say, I don't give people advice. I have information. If you want to know some facts and if you want to know, you know, sometimes how I dealt with something. But I do believe that everybody has a right to be themselves. Everybody has their own path and their own road to walk. And everybody's talent is different. And I think that we have to kind of base, you know, just how we look, how crazy, you know, the people look, all the 
you know, the images that, you know, the people have. It's what they feel right about in themselves, and I think they have a right to do that. So I, it's not up to me to tell them not to do it, because who am I to tell anybody what to do? I mean, I look like, uh, you know, the town tramp, and that's how I pattern my look after the town tramp. So who am I to tell somebody else how to dress or what to do? But your, your image is very much part of who you are, but also you've chosen projects and you've written songs that are feminist, you, you, you supported Trans America, you, the, the film about tra trans rights in America, um, Dumplin', a great film that's just been out recently. You've always been really ahead of the curve in terms of society. Have you intentionally sought out projects like that that are no, close to your heart? I think they just come to me and I'm always there in place. And I think that I just live my femininity. I mean, I'm not a, people say, are you a feminist? I say, I don't know. I don't know exactly what that means. I'm proud to be a woman. I'm proud to be a woman in business. I'm proud to, to do what I do. But I like to just live it. I like to be an example. And you're right, I wrote some of the, my first uh, single on RCA Records back in the 60s it was called Just Because I'm a Woman. And it, was, it addressed the issues that we're addressing now. And then I've, all through the years I've written, you know, these songs that, that were to strengthen and to uh, empower women. But just people, you know, in general. And it's the empowerment, isn't it, actually? Because that, that theme that runs through so much of your work, it's yeah. joyous, there's dignity, and it's empowerment. And it's about saying how brilliant women are, but not saying how rubbish men are. It's, yeah, well, it's see, about that's saying stand up and have a bit and, of backbone. And one of the, in the new 9 to 5 musical, my first line in the, in the new song that kind of took the place of the fantasy scene, it says, I love men, don't get me wrong. I've always had one of my own. Many good men I've known, but then there's you, me and Mr. Hart. Mm -hmm. So I've known a few of them, but I've known more good men in my life than I have bad ones. And of course, we all come across those people. But there's a lot of bad women in this world too. I've worked with a, I've worked with a lot of women that were bitches, and you know, as bitchy as any boss could be. So it's just about the person, you know. It's just how we treat each other with respect. Do you think in your lifetime you'll see a female president in America? I think there could be, very well could be, but she needs to be smart. She needs to know what she's doing. She don't need to be just trying to take it just to prove a point because she's a woman. She needs to have the goods. She needs to have the knowledge. She needs to have the backbone to be able to run a country. I don't think we're going to ever uh, have a woman president if we don't really feel like she's capable of saving the country or saving the world for that matter. When you look back over your life, you know, 26 number ones, the most a decorated country music star, you know, you're an absolute icon, but also your literacy project uh, and, and the money that you've pumped back into Pigeon Forge with Dolly, Dolly World. What do you think you'll be most proud of? Well, I'm proud of all of it, I have to honestly say, because you never know when you start out how you're going to be known or thought of when you're older. You, you hope for the best. But I'm really proud of the Imagination Library, the, the project that I've done where we give books to children. But I've been very proud of everything that I've accomplished to be in the Songwriters Hall of Fame because my songwriting is very important. But I won't mind being known as the book lady, but I want to be known for my music as well and to have left something great in the world that wasn't there before I came along. And do you think that's what your mum and dad would be most proud of as well? I think my mom and dad would be very proud of me. I always think they're looking down and saying, you go girl, we knew you could do it and we love you. Dolly, thank you so much for talking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure, thank, thank you. you.